so you can use that. Yeah, okay, so good afternoon, guys. So today, Kasa and I will be talking about what genetic algorithms are and what it is capable of and some real life application of this algorithm. So, <clears throat> what is a genetic algorithm? It is a search heuristic that is inspired by Charles Darwin's theory of natural evolution. So, which basic, basically just means it's like an artificial intelligence search technique that reflects the process of natural selection where the fittest individuals are selected for reproduction in order to produce offspring of the, in the next generation. So, like an natural selection is an analogy. Like I said earlier, in the first picture, you see that due to natural genetic variation, you see that uh, there are more brown mice than black mice. Lah. So, the brown mice are a lot more visible to the eagle than the black mice because the black mice's fur act as camouflage and help them blend into the surroundings. So, there's a lower probability of the black mice being eaten by the eagle. So, this means that uh, most of the bright mice will not survive to reproduction age, unlike the black mice, and therefore in the next generation, there will be a higher fraction of black mice uh, than in the previous generation. Then this process keeps iterating, and at the end, a uh, generation with the fittest and most adaptable individuals will be found, or in this case, animals. So yeah. Then now, yeah, you can see from the flowchart here, it is a general framework on how the genetic algorithm works before reaching the optimal condition. So the first step would be to create an uh, initial population, then next determining their fitness uh, function, which basically means like uh, assigning them a score, like uh, determining which ones are the fittest individuals in the population. Then next is selection. So yeah, selection is just selecting the most uh, fittest individuals. Uh. So after selecting the fittest individuals, the individuals will cross over with one another, which is technically known, known as mating. And finally, mutation might take place, which is like defined as a random genetic tweak in the individuals, which also promotes the idea of diversity in the population. And Kasan will elaborate more on this later. So just a quick analogy uh, again. Uh, as you can see from this, yeah, as you can see from this graph, right, uh, it's actually an optimization problem of two variables, x and y. So uh, and the two sets of contours that you see are actually different. Uh, one is, is a local minima, and the other is a global minima. So basically, the whole point is to get all these points on the graph into the global minimum in order to solve the maxi optimization problem because the global minimum means that it is the lowest value out uh, that you can achieve on any point of the graph. So yeah, the, the local minima is just like the lowest value in a particular range of a function, but the global minimum is the lowest value in like the entire graph. So we will more be elaborated later again. Uh. So yeah, so there are like, uh, it will go through several generations, right? Then it will uh, try to, it will give a slightly better solution each time, but it won't be the best yet. So uh, the dots will actually converge around the global minimum to search for the best solution. So yeah, as you see, uh, it jumps from generation one to five, because actually, uh, usually it will take a lot of generations, like maybe like 500, yeah, so 20, then 500, yeah. So after the, a lot of generations, right, you'll finally reach the optimum solution at the global minimum value, and hence the algorithm will end. So now I'll just pass my time over to Carson to talk more about the algorithm. Okay, thank you, Wiming. Um, so, so this is the genetic algorithm steps again repeated. So after the initialization of population, right, you will be will be going into the while loop, where you uh, first determine the selection, determine fitness function, select the crossover and mutation, and if it fails, then you will go repeat the whole thing again over multiple iterations. So this is uh, the genetic algorithm in the code. First, actually, we will, I will say that the fitness function might be, let's say, to get as many ones as possible in this six-bit binary string. So uh, let's say our population starts with these three, these three people, these three strings, chromosomes. Uh, so the first, so we choose only the best, right? Choose like the, maybe the top two or top few, depending on the programmer. So in this case, we chose variable one and two because they have the more, more ones. So we use them to, to breed. So you see crossover. This is a one point crossover where you split directly into half. Oh, I can't, I can't see that. Yeah, so the one point is in the middle of each parent, but there can be multiple points also. It can be after every two, two bits or every four bits. So, um, so here we select 
select two parents. After that, we cross over to introduce like genetic diversity. And next, there will be also mutation to increase the diversity. So uh, I will elaborate more on this later. So you can you notice that the third third one of the first parent actually moves becomes a zero, and the subsequent one, the fourth one, fourth bit actually becomes one. Lastly, we will evaluate that which one is uh, based on what, what we defined as a fitness function earlier. Like the more ones that there is, it's a better, um, it's a better uh, chromosome. So after that, we will just pick this one and then we use it for selection and breeding again and again until, until we reach a point where we are satisfied with the, uh, the code or the whether we have reached the function. So there are three possible, th three possible termination conditions. One is that after a while, you notice that there are no improvements in, in the population. So let's say we are trying to select, because we are trying to select the maximum number of strings, we like, uh, uh, we don't know, we don't know, we, we don't have a predefined image of how many strings, how many ones there can be in this six, six bit string. So after, maybe after a few generations, you realize that five is the max that you can go, then maybe that's when we stop. Another way to stop the code is to uh, to exit the while loop is to let's say you define after fifty generations out, no matter what the result is, whether there are two 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 ones in this six bit string or whether there are five ones in this six bit string, we are gonna stop. And the last way we can stop it is after the fitness function has reached a predefined value, like for example, five ones or six ones in this in the six bit string. So we are, I'm gonna talk about the application next. So this is a traveling salesman problem, which is like, in case you do not know, it's like given a list of cities and the distances between each city, uh, what is the shortest possible route that, that the salesman can actually visit each city and return to the origin city? So you can see that after 124 generations, they uh, managed to minimize it to around 12,000 km. The next one, right, uh, I'm going to show you a video. Where is it? Wow, I mean, so much that's not. Right. Okay. If it's not switched yet, how do I. Okay. So. I'm going to show you this video and I'm going to explain how I show you the video. Uh. Okay, so over here, right, you can see that uh, this creature is. Okay, it's trying to jump, its objective is to survive as long as possible. So there's this fitness function, is the time taken for it to uh, last the stage. So uh, if you don't know what this thing is doing, right, don't worry because it doesn't as well. There is no predefined image on how how it should look like. Whether the eventual creature will be in in circles, the shapes will be circles, square, or whether it will be jumping like that, moving like that. He has no idea on how it should move. So um, the next step is it will select and breed the model that is that lasts the stage the longest, and it will introduce slowly. Uh, it will cross over, slowly introduce mutation, maybe uh, move move the third limb or suddenly gain the ability to shift uh, round its corner a bit for the for one of its limb. And the termination condition is reached, right? When when a creature maybe da stops after a, there's no neg there's negligible improvement in the performance. But after after ten minutes and it still doesn't die, then maybe that's okay. So you can see that it's slowly learning, it's changing its shape changing its movement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so 249 is the last generation. Yeah, after a certain time. It's okay. Yeah, that's it, that's it. It will pass all.
Okay. So that's one application. Okay, this is application on uh, local. Uh, this is what we mean described just now, but now in 3D form. So this final example, right, is the red little points start off across the map, like uh, the initialization of the population, and they, it will eventually converge to the global minima, because it's the lowest point on the graph. The local minima, in this case, acts like some kind of disruption. It's like a shallower hole, a reasonable solution, but it's not the most optimal one. And in reality, it might be hard for the values that are already in the local minima to escape the hole. So sometimes the, the scientists, the coder might need to go and restart the algorithm or actually increase the, the rate of mutation level such that they, ex they try to escape the local minima and, and find a new place to maybe uh, approach the global minima. Yeah, so I think with that, that's the end. Thank you.